Hello, my name is Dr Neil Morris and I'm a Senior Lecturer in Neuroscience in the Faculty of Biological Sciences at the University of Leeds. Today I'm going to talk about the action potential, which is an electrical event that neurons and other excitable cells use to convey information. I'm going to focus on the action potential in neurons of the human brain. Action potentials are also seen in other excitable cells, including heart and muscle cells. In order to get the full benefit from this podcast, you should listen to the podcast about the resting membrane potential first. The action potential is an essential feature of all neurons. It is the means by which neurons convey information to one another and to effectors, for example, muscles and glands. Action potentials are seen in the majority of neurons in the central and peripheral nervous system and work in the same way in most neurons. In this podcast, we will learn about the major features of the action potential and some of the principles governing how action potentials are generated. We will also look at the function of the action potential. We'll start by looking at how the action potential is generated. As we discovered in the podcast about the resting membrane potential, there are non-gated leak channels in the membranes of neurons which allow the passive flux of potassium and sodium ions in accordance with electrochemical gradients. These ion channels give rise to the resting membrane potential, which is normally around minus 65 millivolts. The resting membrane potential is the potential across the membrane when the neuron is quiescent or at rest. The action potential is generated by the brief, transient opening of gated ion channels. Remember that ion channels are membrane proteins with a central pore to allow the flow of ions. Gated ion channels have a gate within the pore which prevents the flow of ions. These gates can be opened by one of a number of triggers including voltage, pH, temperature or stretch. Action potentials are usually generated by the opening and closing of voltage gated ion channels. That is, ion channels that open and close in response to a change in voltage or potential difference across the membrane. The two main types of voltage-gated ion channels responsible for action potentials are voltage-gated potassium channels and voltage-gated sodium channels. We will look at each stage of the action potential in turn. The first stage of the action potential is called the depolarizing phase. This begins when the membrane of the neuron becomes slightly positive, normally due to incoming excitatory information. As a result, the voltage at the axon hillock of the neuron reaches a potential of around minus 40 millivolts. This is called the threshold potential. The axon hillock which is located where the cell body forms the beginning of the axon, is the region of the neuron where action potentials are generated. When the membrane potential reaches the threshold potential, this triggers the opening of voltage-gated sodium channels, which are densely packed within the axon hillock. Opening of voltage-gated sodium channels causes a rapid influx of sodium ions, which travel down their electrochemical gradient into the cell. This inward flow of positively charged sodium ions causes the inside of the cell to become positively charged. The opening of voltage-gated sodium channels is regenerative, meaning that more and more channels open. Soon, there is a massive influx of sodium into the cell. The result is that the inside of the cell becomes positively charged. In fact, the membrane potential reverses polarity and exceeds zero millivolts. Remember that sodium ions are trying to reach their equilibrium potential of plus 60 millivolts. However, this influx of sodium is short-lived. The voltage-gated sodium channels only remain open for around one millisecond. After this time, they become inactivated, which means that a gate, called the inactivation gate, shuts, preventing further flux of sodium ions. This event marks the peak of the depolarizing phase.
during the depolarizing phase of the action potential, the positive change in membrane potential causes the opening of voltage-gated potassium channels. These channels open more slowly than voltage-gated sodium channels, and they allow potassium ions to leave the cell down their electrochemical gradient. As voltage-gated potassium channels open more slowly than voltage-gated sodium channels, they only really begin to exert their effects once the sodium channels have become inactivated. At this stage, the outward flow of potassium ions causes a rapid reduction in the membrane potential to a negative potential, after which the voltage-gated potassium channels close. This is called action potential repolarization, and it can vary in duration according to the type of voltage-gated potassium channels involved. A typical action potential is between 2 and 5 milliseconds in duration. The final stage of the action potential is called the after-hyperpolarization, or undershoot. This occurs after the repolarization and causes the membrane potential to dip below the resting membrane potential. The after-hyperpolarization, or AHP, is caused by too much potassium leaving the cell making the potential too negative, or by the opening of a specific type of potassium channels. The AHP can vary in length from a couple of milliseconds to hundreds of seconds. After the AHP, the membrane returns to the resting membrane potential, and this marks the end of the action potential. Now that we've looked at how an action potential is formed, we need to consider two additional issues. Firstly, the information conveyed by action potentials, and secondly, how action potentials travel along neurons. Action potentials are all or nothing events. Once they are initiated, they cannot be stopped, and they will always be of the same size and shape. Therefore, they are a bit like binary information, either on or off. This means that an action potential on its own doesn't really convey much information. Interestingly, it is the frequency of action potentials, i.e. the number generated per second, that conveys information within neurons. As action potentials are all or nothing events, it is not possible to interrupt them once started. This phenomenon is called the refractory period. Action potentials actually have two refractory periods, an absolute refractory period and a relative refractory period. The absolute refractory period is the period of time during which it is impossible for the neuron to fire another action potential. This is during the depolarization and repolarization phases and is primarily due to sodium channel inactivation. The relative refractory period is the time when it is difficult but possible to generate another action potential if a large stimulus is applied and it occurs during the after-hyperpolarization, or undershoot, phase. Once an action potential has been generated at the axon hillock, it must travel down the axon to reach the synaptic terminals to initiate synaptic transmission. Action potentials can travel long distances along axons without being reduced in size. This is a considerable feat, especially when you think about action potentials traveling along the length of axons from your spinal cord to your toes. Action potentials travel along axons by a process called propagation. Many axons from neurons to muscles in the body are covered with an insulating material called myelin, which is produced by supporting cells called glia. This insulation has gaps along the length of the axon, called nodes of Ronvier. Action potentials propagate along these myelinated axons by saltatory conduction, which literally means that they jump from node to node. This process means that the action potential is not reduced in size and allows it to travel quickly along the axon to the synaptic terminal. It's also worth remembering that action potentials are unidirectional. They can only travel in one direction, 
down the axon from the neuron cell body because the sodium channels behind the propagating action potential are inactivated, thus preventing action potential generation. So there we have it. The action potential is an electrical event caused by the transient opening of voltage-gated sodium and potassium channels which disrupts the resting membrane potential. Action potentials are all or nothing events which propagate along axons and initiate chemical synaptic transmission in axon terminals, allowing communication between neurons.